if I was going to pick a rod for sandy beaches, I'd look at something in a, a moderate to moderate fast action where you're going to get the distance and you're also going to get the durability. Uh, meaning that if you do get good fish and they're out of distance, you're not going to get tired out within 10 minutes. Yet, if the fish are out, you're going to be able to reach them. That's a big thing, especially with, uh, with the South Shore. You never know when we're going to get on that sand deal bite again. And more than once I've been out there and watched guys who didn't have the proper rod were not able to reach the backside of the bar where you needed to be and casting as hard as they can, throwing as hard as they can. They could not reach out there because they had a rod that was too sloppy, too slow, or just not properly suited for the type of fishing that needed to be done at the time. Um, a few of us would bang fish, cast out to the back of the bar, work a plug or a jig over the bar and let it slip into the trough in the front. And as soon as it went down, we'd be banging fish. And everybody was looking at us, trying to figure out what we were trying to do, what we were doing different from what they were doing. Everybody's using the same tin with the green tail. Everybody's using the same thing. But certain guys had the proper rods, were able to reach, were either super good casters or like myself, not being a great caster, I build a rod to compensate. And by doing that, you can reach out that far and yet have the durability and the fish fighting ability to have a rod. Okay. Okay. If, I, if I'm looking to pick a, a rod for the open beach, um, I could use anything from nine foot. John Skinner uses a nine foot rod and he's been very successful with it. Nine foot, 10 foot, 11 foot. 11 and a half is about tops. If I'm using one of the more modern blanks, the lighter blanks, if I'm using one of the older, heavier ones, I'm going to try and stay away from it because it's just too much weight. You're just beating yourself to death. But 11 foot is good. I, I'm comfortable with 11. I'm so stinking short that I use that extra foot up top to stay above the waves. Some of the taller guys, 10 foot. You can even get away with 9 foot. I personally, if you just open beach, I like something 10 or 11 foot. But 9 foot will work. Nine foot works fine. There's plenty of guys out there catching plenty of fish on a nine foot rod. Weight. Okay, in a weight range, um, I'm, again, I'm going to look to throw something that's very rarely do you use like half three quarters in this situation. But three quarter ounce bucktails, if you got a break right on the, right on the beach, um, like we had this morning, for instance, all the fish are in the wash at your feet. So, you want something that's going to throw light enough stuff. SP minnows, that's the big rage right now. Ounce, ounce to again, three, three and a half. You're on an open beach, you really don't have to throw anything that heavy because if you're throwing three ounces, it's going to sink to the bottom and you're just dragging it back anyway. So if you're throwing a three ounce popper, absolutely. Again, you want something that's going to be in that range. Three, maybe three and a half. So an ounce to three and a half, and the ability to throw. Some rods that are rated one ounce will not throw a three quarter ounce bucktail no matter what you do. It just won't do it. The rod is too stiff, action's too stiff, and you just can't get the proper feel. I see guys go out there, they want the latest and the greatest, they have me build the newest rod out there, and then they get out in the, on the beach and they cast it like they're casting their old GSBs. All right, they get out there, they, launch, they try and load the thing on the back cast, they're whipping it back, they're whipping it forward, and the plug's not going anywhere. They're, they're, what they're doing is they're overloading the rod. Um, I had somebody in particular, I won't mention any names, he's our photographer, but when he first started out, when I had built him a couple of the newer rods, it took a little while to teach him that you don't have to put your whole body into the cast anymore. Let the rod do the work. All right, when you come back on your back cast, you don't need to load the rod on your back cast. You don't need to whip it back and whip it forward. Bring your plug behind you. Let that plug dangle and use good form. All right, you want to pull and push at the same time and you want to keep that plug over your head as much as possible. That's going to help you keep your aim straight. You're not going to be pissing off the guys to your left or your right because your plug's going this way, your tin's going that way, you're crossing four guys on your cast. Good form is fundamental.